watching this video, you're obviously looking for more information about DKIM and DMARC. We'll begin with DMARC. DMARC stands for Domain-Based Message Authentication, Reporting, and Conformance, or DMARC for short. DMARC is a record type that tells recipient mail servers what to do with messages that pass or fail their SPF and DKIM checks. Uh, DMARC was a record type designed to help prevent spoofing and other ways that fraudulent mail is being sent. Let's look at it with kind of a real-world analogy. Say you're buying concert tickets to your favorite show. You get sent the tickets in the mail, and when you show up, they have to validate your tickets in some way to allow you inside. They scan your ticket. If you do have the correct ticket, they allow you in. If you don't have the correct ticket, they don't allow you in. It's that simple. Now, let's talk about what a DMARC record actually looks like. A DMARC record is a TXT record that you will need to input with your domain host uh, in your DNS. You'll want to input the first part, the host name, beginning with underscore DMARC dot, and then replace your domain dot com with the domain that you would like to set this record up for. The TTL for this record will need to be set to the lowest possible. Typically around one hour is perfect. The record type, as we mentioned, is TXT and the value is where you'll specify what the record actually does. This first part of the value, v equals dmark1, just tells the internet that this is a dmark record in the record type. The second part is where you specify what you want recipient mail servers to do with your emails. The policy we recommend starting with is p equals none. This is known as a reporting only policy. Once you're comfortable with the reporting only policy, you can scale it up to p equals quarantine, and that tells recipient mail servers to quarantine or move the messages to the spam folder for any messages that fail their SPF or DKIM checks. The third option we have here is to set P equal to reject. That tells recipient mail servers to outright reject any messages that fail their SPF and or DKIM checks. Third part of this is very important as well. RUA equals mail to. Uh, here you'll want to substitute chosen-email at yourdomain.com for whatever email you would like to receive the reports generated by this about your domain. Again, this is going to help you receive reports on fraudulent emails that are being received across the internet that are sent by your domain. It's very important to monitor. Now, that about sums up DMARC, but DMARC only applies to messages as they're incoming into a mail environment. What can you do about messages that you're sending out? The solution we have for that is called DKIM. DKIM stands for Domain Keys Identified Mail, and it works by having your sending mail server stamp each one of your messages with a private key that the recipient mail server can then decode on their end with the public key available in your DNS. Now, to continue our analogy with the concert we were using earlier uh, for DKIM signing, imagine that you are the rock star. You want all of your concert goers that buy tickets to know that the tickets they're getting are legitimate. So to do that, you're going to stamp your outgoing messages with a unique identifier so that when they receive that, they'll be able to know for certain that the ticket that they have is genuine. Once you have your messages stamped to show their validity, DKIM in this analogy, you still need to make sure that you have a security guard at the gate checking tickets. Your DMARC record will be your security guard to check each message for validity as it enters the stadium. Remember, your DKIM signing will not work on its own. You need a DMARC record to enforce your policy with other mail providers. If there is no security guard, your DMARC record, even people with counterfeit tickets would be able to get in to see your rock show. Now let's take an example about what that record will actually look like in your DNS. The first part here in the host name will begin with the selector that will be given to you by your mail host at the time you turn on your DKIM signing. After the selector number, You'll put period underscore domain key dot, and then you'll replace your domain dot com with the domain that you're looking to set this record up for. The TTL should be the lowest possible. The record type will be TXT as well. The value has three parts. The first part, V equals DKIM1, specifies that this is your DKIM record. Uh, the second part, K equals RSA, specifies the encryption key that will be used for your public key. And the third part is the public key itself. P equals. We'll replace these asterisks with a long string of letters and numbers that will be generated specifically for your domain at the time that signing is turned on. 
We'll go over the selector that is generated and the p-value public key uh, in one of the following steps in this video. In the next step, we'll take a look at actually generating the key that you will input into your DNS. To follow along with these steps, please keep in mind that these steps specifically apply to our mail environment, and if you have a different mail provider, you'll need to contact them for their recommended steps for how to set this up. Now we're going to see how to actually turn on DKIM signing for your domain from within the control panel. If you follow along through these steps with me right now. Uh, if you scroll down from the home page to beneath the domains heading, you'll see the option for sender authentication, DKIM. We'll click on that. It may take a moment for this screen to load, but once it does, you'll see the list of domains that you have available in your control panel to enable DKIM signing for. In this one, we're going to turn it on for emailhelpvids.com. So go ahead and click on the text of your domain. You'll see this option, uh, DKIM is currently disabled. We'll click the option to enable DKIM for this domain. Then you'll see here the progress is showing as enabling, and it will generate the records including the selector that we're going to need to input and the public key that we'll be put in your DNS and the, the record that we went over previously. Now that you have your selector and public key, you'll be able to input the DNS record we mentioned previously, but substituting the example for the records that you now have. Uh, once you input the record within your DNS, the control panel will check to make sure that those records are active and propagating, and then you'll be all set to have your messages signed with DKIM. Now that we have DKIM turned on for your domain, there are a few special situations to keep in mind. If you have any of the following enabled, uh, disclaimers, auto-forwarding, exchange contacts, or group lists, it would be recommended to contact your email administrator for more information before uh, turning on DKIM signing for your domain. Another thing to keep in mind is that we recommend setting up your SPF record before implementing your DKIM and DMARC policies. Uh, your SPF record is referenced in your DMARC policy, and so in order for it to perform correctly, we do recommend setting that up first. If you have any questions about how to set up an SPF record or about DNS records in general, please see the other videos that we have uh, available as well. Now we've talked a lot in this video about different types of records, uh, DKIM, which is your message signing on outbound messages, and DMARC, which is the policy you enforce as mail servers receive your mail. Of course, if you have any further questions and are a Rackspace customer, please reference our email help tool at emailhelp.rackspace.com or give us a call at our support line available in the top part of your Rackspace control panel. Thank you for watching this video and enjoy the rest of your day.